Today, I'll show you how to do your crypto taxes in 2022. Hello, my name is Nelly and welcome back to another video. Today, we're specifically reevaluating our complete guide to crypto taxes, obviously with the help of Coinly. So um, it's gonna be a breakdown, very similar to the last video I did uh, last year, um, obviously going through all the steps of exactly what you need to do to calculate your crypto taxes and how you can easily do it in under 15 minutes with Coinly. So why wouldn't you? I'm gonna leave some timestamps down below if you need to rewatch a certain video or if there's something you don't understand and, and you know maybe you have questions, you can also leave those down below. So I'll go through the entire process, setting up some of the wallets I deal with, Coinbase, Binance, um, Coinbase Pro, and then I'll also leave you with a bunch of different resources from the countless hours of content I've made, and of course, you know, the help articles and stuff like that. So without further ado, let's jump into today's video. Alrighty, so I've got my reading glasses on. I'm here in the Coinly um, homepage. Obviously, if you haven't made, made an account, make one. It's completely free. Um, and then sign in and head over into the wallet section. So like I said, we're doing Coinbase, Coinbase Pro, Binance, and I'll obviously show you also how to import your ledger and, and any other, let's say, hard wallet. So first things first, click on Add Wallet, click on Binance, and then click on Set Up Auto Sync. And then this one is really straightforward. This is the easiest one um, out of the three that we're covering today. You'll be redirected to your Coinbase to grant read-only access to your account. This does not give us access to move your funds. Coinly is not interested in touching any of your funds. It will not do that. It just wants the information so it can easily calculate your crypto taxes. Note, if you also trade on Coinbase Pro, you will need to add that account separately. So this is a very important point. Make sure to add all your wallets, all your exchanges, because if you miss one of them and you're transferring um, currencies, if you're transferring crypto between one and the other, Coinly will not be able to recognize that this is an internal trade. It will think that it's a you know profitable trade and it will tax it. So very important step, make sure to add all your wallets anyways we're going to click on continue to coinbase and then we're going to give the access to um coinly to be able to get that information Alrighty, so while we're waiting for our coinbase transactions to load into coinly and they will show up um here shortly we're going to click on add wallet and add our coinbase pro uh, information so same thing as before click set up auto sync and this time we need the api key the api secret and the api um, pass so i'll show you exactly where to get those on their website so we're here in the coinbase pro website in the top right corner you're going to click this um, profile and then you're going to click api and it'll take you to this page from there you're going to click on a new api key and then here we're going to give it a nickname we can call it let's say coinly and then permissions, we're only interested in view. Of course, we're not interested in transfer and trade. And then passphrase is the first piece of information that we're gonna copy and paste into API pass. And then next, we're gonna go into create API key, and then we're gonna give it a code so we can access the rest of our information. So once we put in our code, we're gonna click add an API key, and then we're gonna get the API secret, which we're gonna copy and paste here. And then the last step will be to click done and then copy this um, this information here, which is the API key. And then we're gonna click secure import. And there you have it. Now we've also imported our Coinbase Pro information. So as mentioned earlier, it's extremely important to add both of these exchanges. If you have internal trades between one or the other, and you don't add one of them, you will not be able to do your uh, taxes correctly because Coinly will not understand that some of these transfers between these two are you know, internal trades. It'll think they're profitable trades, which will completely screw up your taxes. So make sure to add all of your wallets. That's probably the most important takeaway from this video. Alrighty, Nelly from the future here with a fresh haircut. And the reason I'm reshooting this part of the video is because we actually added a bunch of cool features to the Binance API. Um, so this part of the video actually became outdated as I was filming it. So um, let's head over to our ad wallets, click on Binance. And now here's where the, I guess, complexity gets a little bit complex, not really. Um, there's two different options. There's the API and then there is the import from file. So if you have a very basic, you know, Binance transactions, deposits, withdrawals, um, basic trades, you can probably just get by with using the API and not have to worry about anything else. Um, their API has improved significantly since the last time I made this video, so that's awesome. Um, however, if you are dealing with futures or OTC, um, these are things that are going to require two different uh, types of file imports. So I guess simple note here, Binance API has limited futures data to the most recent three months. 
So we recommend users use CSV files, but then set up API with the start import from now option, which obviously I'll show you in a second. And then another note here is also there is a limitation with OTC slash converts that are older than one year. So if you're working with these, also use this CSV first and then import from um, import start import from now option. Um, obviously, this will make a lot more sense when I show you what it means on their website. But like I said, if you're dealing with very simple trades, you will be just fine using the API. Okay, so let me just show you how to get the actual API. So click set up auto sync. And these are the things that I mentioned just a minute ago. Um, obviously, one more thing to keep in mind is that Binance takes a little bit longer than other APIs. So if your data doesn't import right away, that's okay. It usually takes about 50 minutes to complete. Okay, so here on the Binance website, head over into the top right corner and find your little profile. And then from there, click on API management. And you're gonna be given two different options. I just wanna quickly elaborate a little bit about both. So the create API is an option where you can modify your API to kind of do whatever. If you want someone to you know, trade on your account, you can use that API and give them those permissions. You can also turn it into just a readable only API. So uh, if you click on that, just make sure the settings are, uh, are set to read only, which they are by default. The one that we're interested in is the create tax report API. So this API is specifically designed to only give read only access. So Coinly does not have any ability to touch or move any of your funds. Not that they would, not that we'd be interested in that, but if you want to make sure that you know it's a read only file or read only API, um, make sure to click that. So click uh, create tax report API and then provide some authentication to be able to get that um, those keys. And there you have it. So here is the API key. So you're going to copy and paste that into Coinly. And then here is the API secret. So you're also going to copy and paste that and click secure import. So as mentioned, this option is gonna be great for a lot of users that are dealing with relatively simple trades. Um, if you're dealing with futures or OTC, um, like the limitations of the uh, that API showed, I will now show you where to get the CSV file. So head over into Binance again, um, head over into the wallet area and click on transaction history. And then you're gonna click on generate all statements. And this will give you a option to select the time frame. So always keep in mind that if you've been using Binance for several years, you will need to import several different files probably. Um, or if you can, I'm not sure if you can select more than, no, okay, so you only select 12 months. Um, make sure to add, have your entire transaction history and that might require separate files. So this, um, for me, I'll just make it um, for this year. So I'll do January 1st to today's date, June 1st. Um, and that'll be my CSV for this year. So once you've selected that, it might take a little bit for it to generate and then you'll be able to download it. So make sure to download that file and save it somewhere. And now heading back into Coinly, add wallets. It would be a very similar procedure. You would this time click import from file and then you would take that file and drag and drop it here and click import. And then lastly, like I said, this part will now be for those people that have to import OTC and futures and their other information. So the first thing you would do is you would follow the CSV part of this video. So you would import your CSV information just like we did in that part. And then once you have that ready, you would go into your wallet and click on it. And then there will be an option to set up also your API. So once you're putting in your API keys, um, from this drop down menu where it says start import from, you want to select now. And this way you will have your entire transaction history on Binance imported correctly. Okay, so we've added our Coinbase, our Coinbase Pro, and our Binance. Let's talk about Ledger and other non-custodial wallets. So this process works for any of them, including hardware, software, or browser. So if you can do this, you can do any of them. So let's go into add wallets and let's add a ledger so we're going to click on that and then we're going to click set up auto sync and here depending on which you know cryptocurrencies you're dealing with you're going to import only those so for ethereum we have one procedure for you know bitcoin bitcoin cash dogecoin dash we have another one and then for all other coins uh, we have the following procedure so anyways let's click on connect blockchains and i'm going to do ethereum and i'm going to do binance so first things first we're going to click here Ethereum and let's give it a name something like Ethereum dash ledger just so we know exactly what this is so keep in mind this only imports transactions from the Ethereum network to import data like BCS polygon and other um, side chains go to this page and add separate um, 
wallet for each network. So obviously, uh, depending on how many currencies you have or you're dealing with, you're gonna need to do this potentially a few different times. So we're looking specifically for the public address or key. Now it's important to note here that wallets like Ledger do not actually have API keys, uh, but we're still using the auto sync function to import data via public keys. Public keys allow Coinly to import data directly from the blockchain. This means you'll have to enter a public key for each type of coin um, you're dealing with. So for me, like I said, I'll be dealing with Ethereum and Bitcoin today, um, but the process is very similar for other keys as well. So I have my um, Ledger Ethereum address, which I'm going to take right now and copy and paste into Coinly. And we're gonna click import. And there you have it. It's as simple as that. I've imported all my Ethereum transactions um, via one public key. Now, as you can see, our ledger transactions are being imported. If we want to do this for Bitcoin, we would click on add wallet, go to ledger again, click set up auto sync, click connect blockchains, and then click BTC. And once again, we can give it a name like Bitcoin ledger. And one thing to keep in mind here is you can enter multiple public addresses by adding a comma comma between them. So now we're going to add our public address or key. So for this part, we recommend that you use the extended public key. So it'll be a key that starts with XPUB, YPUB, or ZPUB. Since Bitcoin will generate a new address for every transactions, it is also possible to add addresses themselves, but you will need to add each and every one of them. So the extended key is much more convenient. Um, this only applies to UTXO blockchains like BTC, LTC, Dodge, ADA, and stuff like that. Uh, most blockchains can be synced with a single address since the address doesn't change, just like I showed you earlier with the Ethereum one. So I found my XPUB key and I've copied and pasted it. And as you can see a sanity check here, make sure it starts with XPUB, YPUB, or ZPUB. And then we're going to click import. And there you have it. Now we've imported our Ledger Ethereum and Bitcoin transactions. And one small note here that I wanna make is talking about more complex trades. Let's talk about, let's say Binance futures. So Coinly will import the actual profit and loss from your futures. It will also aggregate the PL transactions. So you only have a few transactions per day, as opposed to potentially hundreds if you're an active trader. For the simplicity of this video, we don't really wanna to go too far into detail that with that, but we do support liquidity trading also. Um, and I've made countless videos on that. We support platforms like Uniswap, Balancer, SusiWap, Cream, and almost any other DeFi protocol you can think of. Okay, so we've added all our important wallets. Now the most, I guess, important part of this video is the transaction review. So you want to make sure that you've added all your wallets. A quick way to check if everything was imported correctly is to compare the balances you see on Coinly with what you actually have on your exchange account. Since all my wallets are imported via the API, Coinly will actually do this automatically. So that'll save you countless hours of time. You may see a yellow um, circle, a yellow icon next to a wallet if you do have some differences. Minor differences can be safely ignored. So we're talking about 0 0.00001 of Ethereum, stuff like that. Um, we're specifically looking for large discrepancies that are due to the API limitations. So you can click on the three dots here on the right side and click troubleshoot to see some of the most common problems with the um, API, but normally if there are API issues, you should just upload the CSV files, which have your complete transaction history. If you have to add wallets not mentioned in this video, you can get our specific wallet integration guides to, you know, each and every wallet exchange, uh, stuff like that. I've made countless videos on it, so you can check this channel for more stuff like that, or you can browse our website for written, written integrations, which are also fantastic. Okay, so I've added my Binance via the CSV file now, and you can see that yellow circle is gone, and yours should be too, unless you have a very small um, difference, which is perfectly normal. Um, and then, yeah, now the last thing to do is to get rid of the deductible, which I will once I get all my information, all my wallets in, and then we can now head over into the tax reports area. So this is the tax reports area where we will have a fantastic summary of all our crypto activity throughout the year. And you can use this to kind of see where your crypto taxes are going to end up. So your capital gains, your income, your transactions, your trades, stuff like that. On the right side, make sure your settings are set accordingly to your country. So for me right now in Canada, I have the adjusted cost basis, so that's all good. 
if you're from the United States or other places, make sure that those are set accordingly. And I've made um, country guides as well, which you can also check out. So when you're ready and happy with everything, you can finally select the tax report appropriate for your needs. And we have plenty of different tax reports. So for the US, we have the IRS Schedule D, Form 8949. You can also export to TurboTax both online and desktop versions. We have reports for UK, Sweden, Norway, France, Switzerland. For Australia, we have the ATO tax report. Canada, Germany, and other countries, we have the complete tax report, which is a document you can um, give directly to an accountant and they can, they can submit it with your other tax documentation. Um, also, you can invite them to Coinly to set up their accountancy firm here with us. And then lastly, make sure to check your country's rules and regulations because this tax report might be deducted. But that brings us to the end of the guide. It was a really straightforward video, I hope. Now you're done your crypto taxes for the year and the next time you do this it'll be even easier because you have all your wallets set up so if you have any questions obviously i'm going to leave some resources down below first we have the coinly help center with countless different crypto tax related articles we have a feedback section if you're having any issues with our software we have a forum section where you can talk to members of our community as well as our staff and then we have a contact section where you can send us a message directly but if you found this video helpful in any way consider dropping a like subscribing for more crypto content and i'll see you next time peace